Sandy Fancy. I'm with Miss USA 2004, and this is my little buddy Dolce, who may be barking throughout this. Um, so being Miss USA was an amazing opportunity. For an entire year, I traveled all over the United States and internationally. I did such amazing things. I got to travel with Wayne Newton in the USO in support of our servicemen and women. Um, I was in Thailand meeting the princess. I was able to scuba dive off the coast of, um, of Cuba. Uh, went to Pete at his birthday party, hosted part of the 2004 presidential inauguration. Um, probably the most rewarding thing I got to do, though, during my year was that I helped to raise over $30 million for breast cancer research. So what an outstanding way to be able to give back um, throughout my year. Uh, the whole year was amazing, though, and if I had to pick probably my favorite part of Miss USA 2004 was when I was able to compete for Miss Universe in Quito, Ecuador. Um, my dog is barking now. This is his little buddy that he brought me to throw for him. Um, but I was in Quito, Ecuador with 80 of the most beautiful women from all over the country, or all over the world, um, who are the icons of beauty in their own country. And we're all together, many of them not even speaking the same language. And here we all come together in just a time of peace and um, happiness. And it was really awesome because during that time in 2004, the United States had just invaded Iraq, too. So there was a lot of harsh feelings going on, especially toward America. And to just see such um, camaraderie amongst us was a really great experience. But then my parents and everything got to travel out to Quito, Ecuador as well and watch me compete. Um, and I placed first runner-up, so that was kind of like icing on the cake of all of it. Um, just an outstanding, amazing year. Couldn't, couldn't uh, ask for anything better from that year. Um, my favorite moment on Dancing with the Stars. I actually really wanted to be on Dancing with the Stars, and I remember talking to my agents and saying, just get me a meeting. I just want to be on the show. Um, it, it just seemed like so much fun. I'm not coordinated at all. I'm the girl who, like, does the robot, like, boop, boop. Um, but so they got me a meeting, and I was honored enough to be part of the show. It was an incredible show to be part of. It's like a family, first of all, but... I was on season four, and there was no time limits on rehearsals. Now they've capped it at, like, five hours, I think, a day. But I was training, like, about ten hours a day, every day. Um, I had blisters on top of blisters. My feet, I already have, like, really gangly toes and funny-looking feet because I'm so tall and lanky. But my feet were completely destroyed from this. Um, I think I'm just not used to dancing in heels. And actually, some contestants who have been on, um, Stacey Keebler, Ian Ziering, have both had to have surgery on their feet since the show. So it just shows you what kind of beating it takes. Um, but having the honor of being part of the show, I was through the moon elated. Then I get to be uh, come out on the very first dance. And I remember um, my first dance was Foxtrot. And I'm backstage, and I am a nervous wreck, knowing that it's live TV to millions of homes, and I have to dance the foxtrot. And I don't even know what the foxtrot is. And I remember my heart was beating so insane. Um, but to overcome that fear was pretty awesome. To get out there and be like, I'm dancing, I'm dancing. And just as long as I didn't forget, um, I think I was just blessed with that moment. Um, projects that I'm working on right now. I actually just finished um, a bunch of hosting for Mark Burnett's new network. It's called YouTube TV. It's a super interactive network where we actually involve the viewers at home. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And so hopefully that network becomes really successful and takes off. I also uh, was recently in a Roger Corman horror film called Piranaconda. It was um, the monster that's part piranha, part uh, anaconda. <laughs> so it's like... Basically a big snake with a lot of teeth. And, um, yeah, we shot it in Hawaii, uh, which was amazing to be on this beautiful island. Um, and then also, recently, I just got back from Brazil, where I was one of the color commentators for the Miss Universe pageant. Um, and that, again, was just awesome. I, and it's funny. I watch the pageants now, and I actually get the same nerves that I had when I was competing. But... To be on the other side of it, not competing, and just being able to talk about the girls and the beauty of their dresses and things was a lot of fun. Um, how did I become a Christian? I actually grew up in a Christian home. Um, we would always go to our little, it was a Lutheran church, um, but I was probably about uh, maybe 10 or 12 years old when I first like accepted Jesus into my heart, um, and I remember, um, I remember
remember it was at like a little silver party. I had a girlfriend over and I was telling her about what I had heard in um, Sunday school. And her and I both laid on the ground and both did it together. Since then, um, I think I've just become stronger in my faith, especially as a woman who's now 33 and in my 30s. Um, I find that I rely more on my faith and turn toward that for my strength more often than when I was younger. And um, it's just really neat to now surround myself with friends that are of the same faith and same belief and just gain strength from them, too. Uh, what accomplishment I am most proud of? Hands down, I am most proud of winning Miss USA. When I made the decision when I was 26 years old that I wanted to become Miss USA, I realized that, yes, it was an honor to, to become Miss USA. Yes, it was um, beautiful to be able to wear this gorgeous crown with diamonds and fancy pearls and platinum, but more importantly, I saw it as a career move for me. I saw it as something, a vehicle that could take me from one place to another and open up so many other doorways. And so when I decided to compete for Miss USA, I decided to give it 100%. Um, so often in my life, whenever I was in college or in school, I would give 80% or 75%, whatever it took to just get the A. Um, rarely did I actually put out 100% of the effort. But I wanted to leave no rock unturned. I wanted to be at Miss USA, and, and at the very end when I was standing with the other girl, I didn't want to think, oh, gosh, I wish I would have done more of that, or I wish I really focused on this. And so I, I just devoted almost an entire year to just preparing for Miss USA and knowing that at the end it was all out of my hands, that I had done the best that I could, and either the judges saw me as the winner or they didn't, but there was nothing else I could do. So the best part is I'm standing there with Miss South Carolina, who ended up being my first runner-up, and we were holding hands, and right before they announced who the winner was, she leaned over and she said, those crowns got so beautiful on your head. And it was so sweet for her to say that. Um, and I almost didn't even recognize it then because I was so in the moment of like, oh, my gosh, this is we're going to get a crown Miss USA. Um, but looking back, it was just such a humbling thing for her to say. But so they crowned me, and I look out in the audience, and most people, when they win Miss USA, they're like, we're going to cry. I was, like, pumping my fist. I look like Rocky Balboa after climbing the stairs. <laughs> um, and I look out, and I see my parents, and they are completely elated because they were my support system throughout the whole thing. So that was, hands down, my best, most proudest accomplishment because it was the American dream that if you really want something, you can go after it 110%, and you can get it. That's the American dream, the beauty of, of this country. Some advice that I would like to give to the girls of Unleash Beauty is um, to really know where beauty lies. And true beauty is not this. True beauty is what comes from inside. Um, it comes from a kindness. It comes from a warm smile. You can see it in the eyes. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with what you're putting into your body in terms of um, uh, your beliefs that you have and your morals and how strong you are in that. Um, the foods that you eat and making sure that they're pure and healthy and fulfill your body and that you're eating to live, not living to eat like most people do nowadays. Um, and that you're surrounding yourself with really good, wholesome, strong people that um, you look up to and that you can turn to for advice. And I think all of that provides a really healthy inside that can only show on the outside and make you more beautiful. So thank you guys uh, for letting me be part of this, and I hope that you have a very wonderful and beautiful fall.